Hello everyone, welcome back to this uh, lecture on first order relativity methods using finite element technique. So, this is the last lecture in the fifth module. Now, the problem that we are going to solve in this case is a portal frame. So, you can see on your screen we have a 5 story 3 bay portal frame. This frame has different material and geometric properties. So, each element of the frame has a number and corresponding to this number you can see the properties are also defined. So, we have elastic modulus E1 and E2 and then there are different cross sections and moment of inertia which are also listed in this table. So, each element has different combinations of material and geometric properties and uh, the limit state in this case is what you can see on your screen. It is Gx is equal to 0 0.061 minus d of x that is the displacement corresponding to a set of random variable defined by capital X. Now, the allowable deformation in this case is 0 0.061 and the displacement we measure at the topmost corner of the portal frame. Now, the structure will be analyzed in ANSYS and once we do a static analysis, at the end of static analysis we will get the solution and from that we will extract the response at the top right corner and that we will use to investigate whether this gx is less than, equal to or greater than 0. And we will use that information further to solve the first order reliability problem. So, our main task is to evaluate reliability index and corresponding probability of failure. But for that, we have all the random variables are defined here. Altogether, we have 21 random variables. We have cross-sectional area, moment of inertia, Young's modulus and the loads acting on the frame. Now, in this case, different random variables are also correlated with different correlation coefficients. So, what you can see, the geometric variables, that means A and I, these variables, they have a correlation coefficient of 0.13, while the material properties, that means U1 and E2, they have a correlation of 0.9, and the loads P1, P2, P3, they have a correlation of 0.95. Now, we have a set of random variables which are correlated and non-normal. So, that corresponds to the most general case that we have already discussed. Now, the earlier problems that we solved where we had the limit state in explicit form, in closed form expressions and once we identified the limit state, we could easily differentiate them with respect to the random variables in the Z space. Because in first order reliability analysis, we need to evaluate gradient in every iteration and based on that gradient, we evaluate the next design point. However, in this case, because we have a implicit performance function, as you can see, we do not know the exact expression of D when we identify this set of vector random variable X. Now, because we have an implicit performance function, whenever we have implicit performance function, uh, we can adapt different models to solve the reliability analysis. We will further discuss the same as we progress in this course. But here in this lecture, we are going to solve this problem and see how we can find out the gradient. That is the most essential step in first order reliability analysis. We first need to evaluate direction cosines and that needs to evaluate first derivative of g with respect to z and based on that we evaluate the new design point. Now, in this case we will use a numerical solution and for that we use central difference technique to evaluate the gradient. Now, for that we need to solve the limit state 
at different points and then based on that solution we evaluate gradient obviously this delta z will dictate the accuracy nevertheless we can adopt this numerical solution to evaluate the gradient and use uh, this finite element softwares because if we have a real life structure then we can model that in ANSYS and then we can easily solve to get the response of the structure. Now I will demonstrate you the complete model but before that let me first explain how we can combine MATLAB with ANSYS but for that first we have to develop the ANSYS model. I will show you the complete model of the portal frame that we are going to solve but to demonstrate how to develop the input file in ANSYS, we will quickly solve one simple portal frame in ANSYS and I will show you how we can create an input template and that we can call from MATLAB to solve and find out the response of the structure. So this MATLAB ANSYS combination has multiple steps. So we start with the basic epidural model. For example, in this case, we have a simple portal frame. So we create a basic template using this epidural solver. And then we save that in its LGW format, which we can convert into .inp format. This .inp format we can access using notepad and we can modify according to our need. So we'll modify this file from MATLAB because in every iteration our design point will change that means the values of random variables will change and for that new set of design point uh, we need to rerun the code to find out the response. So this INP file is then solved and we write the output and based on that output evaluate the null state and that we again repeat to numerically solve the gradient. So these are the steps. I will quickly show you how we can model this in ANSYS. Particularly for those who are not familiar with the modeling in ANSYS, this will be helpful. And once we do that, we will go back to the actual portal frame that we are going to solve for reliability analysis. So let us quickly model this and see how we can create a .inp file that will access from MATLAB. So for that we use this epidural solver. So we first select the element type. Obviously in this demonstration I will quickly go through the process but for complex structures the modeling itself is challenging so that you have to learn how to use epidural but this uh, demonstration will show you how you can develop the template and combine ANSYS with MATLAB. So for our analysis, because we have a simple portal frame, we use a two noded beam element. So the element type is selected. Then we define the material properties. So these are the structural properties. We are in linear range, elastic and then isotropic. Use appropriate unit. I'm using these values just for demonstration. So once we define elastic modulus, we also define density. So the material property is defined. Then we define the section. In this case, we have a beam section. So let us call it rectangular section and then we use the dimension to define the beam cross section. So once that is done then we create the model for that we first create the key points
because we have a simple portal frame we need four key points and that you can see on your screen now we'll join them using straight lines so you connect them using straight lines and that shows our portal frame now once we create the geometry we have to mesh it so for that we have a mesh tool option here in the global attribute you can see we can define different element type different materials different cross section and that's how we can create the complex model and in fact the original model that we are going to solve for uh, reliability analysis there we have different cross sections different material so this is where we select uh, different uh, properties before we create the mesh so for us we have only one material property for the time being so we have line element so we select them and then for the time being we divide each line in five elements and then we create the mesh so the mesh is ready now then we apply boundary condition for that we go to loads then define loads setting sorry apply then structural displacement on key points so we select the two key points and apply all degrees of freedom restrained so you can see all degrees of freedom are restrained at the bottom then we go for analysis so new analysis you can see it is a static analysis and now we have to define the loads so again we go to define loads then apply then structural force and we select this corner and then apply a moment it is along x so with this magnitude so we define the applied force so you can see this red arrow showing the force applied at the left corner now we can solve this so let us quickly solve so the solution is done once the solution is done we can plot them so we plot the deformed and undeformed shape so that we can see and now we can see there is a sway and because of this lateral load at this top corner there is a deformation now this creates the complete template so what we do we now write the log file so we create the log file and then you can see the log file is created so we change the extension and then we can open this file in notepad and here you can see the complete set of commands for this modeling and analysis is there now in this file you can identify the material properties for example here is the young's modulus then here is the density then you can identify the sectional properties you can identify the loads and then at the end also you see we are solving this model so this file this text file we can change as per our need so as we continue in our iteration so we have different values of these parameters as we progress from one design point to another and from matlab we can change these values and then run it to get the solution 
of this structure. Now, for that, we need a different set of comments. So, in our case, we need the deformation at the top right corner. For that, we have to first identify the node numbers that I will show with our actual model. So, this is how the log file is created and that is converted into .inp file. Now, for the response, we need a set of comments and you can see on your screen, these are the set of comments, epidural comments required to extract the response. So, for our actual structure, I will show you the model in a minute. Then we have to identify this top right corner and identify the node number because that node number will tell the solver to extract the result. Now, for that, if you see the syntax, so we have get response. The parameter is ux. In our case, we have x direction along the horizontal direction. So, we find out the deformation u along x direction at node number 32. So, once we get it from the complete solution, then we write the output file. So, we define the file name and along with extension. So, we have output.txt and then we write this response that is ux at node number 32 in this output file. So, in the .inp file, we just copy and paste this set of comments and then we can extract the response. Now, if we see the actual structure, so here is the model in ANSYS that you can see. So, in this structure, we have to extract the response at this top right corner. So, for that, we first need to identify the node number. So, we can write the node number. And you can see the node number here in this case is 32. So, we need to ex extract the horizontal deformation at this node number 32 from the complete solution. Now, let me show you the MATLAB file that we are going to use. Now, this file you are familiar with exactly same uh, function file that we used earlier is here. But in this case, we define all 21 random variables. So, the mean value, standard deviation and the correlation coefficients. So, we have three different types of uh, correlation coefficient in this set and accordingly we define them and that is how we prepare the covariance matrix which is here. So, in this line, we create the covariance matrix and because we have correlated random variable, this set of random variables, we have to first uncouple and for that, we go for Eigen analysis, which you can see in the next line. So, using this Eigen analysis, we convert the random variables from its original space to an intermediate space, we call it Y space. And in this space, for the new set of random variables, we evaluate mean and standard deviation. Now, because of this Eigen analysis, Y space is uncorrelated. Once we get the properties of Y, that means mean and standard deviation of Y, then we continue the iteration and then we first initiate the design point. Then at this point, because we have a set of non-normal random variables, we first convert them into equivalent random variables and for that we call eq norm which we developed earlier but in this case we have a gumbel distribution so that uh, we have already developed the code uh, the way uh, it is written was explained earlier so i'm not going to uh, write it again <coughs> So, we get mean and standard deviation 
then based on that we convert y into z and then in the z space we first find out the gx value and for that we call this f underscore val this is the limit state function earlier we had limit underscore state so that is here a val or function evaluation at the initial point now let me show you this function file here you can see all 21 random variables are defined and using this definition we call this matlab ansys so in this file matlab ansys we basically get the solution d of x and then based on that we calculate what is the gx so in this matlab ansys if we go you see we first create the input file based on the values of these parameters so we have a separate file make inp in this we use that dot inp i just showed you because we have a simple model we can write it in a single line but if you have a complex model you can also do it accordingly but the point i wish to show you is that in this uh, file we change the values of the random variables so you have altogether 21 random variables and their values are changed here one by one as per the design point we have in a particular iteration so once we have it the complete file is now ready so what we do we save this we write this inp file and then save it for further analysis so once that is ready then we call ansys solver and then this input inp file is solved and then that creates the output dot txt file which i have already explained now in this output file the response that we are looking at that is the horizontal displacement at node number 32 is written so we get that displacement and that displacement is passed here so that's how from ansys we actually get the response and from matlab we combine ANSYS model and then evaluate the limit state function. Now this limit state is called from the main file which is here and then after this we need to differentiate which we do it numerically here and for that again we use central difference formula and that's how is done here. So we again call function value at different points based on the formula that I showed you earlier and then we calculate the numerical value of the gradient. Now this is this gradients are used further to evaluate the z nu. So that's how the solution continues here and if I run it we can get the reliability for this problem so let us run here so the first iteration starts for that again it uses the initial values of uh, design variables and based on that it numerically evaluates gradient and from that gradient it estimates the new design point
So the first iteration is completed and at the end of first iteration, we have a beta value of 10. With that, the second iteration starts. So at the end of second iteration, the beta value is 4.6130 and that is used for the next iteration. Okay, the solution converges. So at the end of 14th iteration, we have the converged result. We get a beta of 4.5081 and we also have the corresponding design point that you can see on your screen in the X space. And finally, we have a PF, which is 3.2706 into 10 to the power minus 6. So, this problem clearly shows how we can combine a MATLAB model with an ANSYS solver and then now we can develop any complex model in ANSYS or similar software and then using that solver we can find out the response of the structure and using that we can estimate the limit state function and once we estimate the limit state function we can use that in the iterative algorithm of Rackwitz Fissler and then solve the first order reliability. With that, let us conclude here um, the fifth module and uh, in the next week we will continue a discussion on um, other problems on reliability methods. Thank you very much.